I'm talking about expectations. Joining us via telephone to speak on what Nigerians should expect from the cabinet reshufflement is an investment analyst, Nia Kinsiju. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. It's a privilege to join you this morning. Great. Some will say um, it's a long time coming. Some will say it took some time. Some will say it is the right time. What would you say motivated this decision, particularly at this particular point in time? I think there was 15 months into the uh, new administration. Uh, uh, by whatever standard you want to look at it, uh, a relatively new administration. But I think it talks more to the character and personality traits of uh, the president, President Bola Metsinobu. Uh, first, as a hands-on administrator, uh, to be able to take this decision early enough in his administration. I think, uh, well, it depends on, uh, we've, uh, we've had an administration where uh, most of the cabinet members uh, were sustained for, for sometimes uh, near two times in office, especially of the last uh, administration uh, under uh, General uh, Wari. Uh, that was his own attitude, you know. But with, um, uh, with the President uh, Tinubu, I think there's another attitude, you know, in the... Uh, uh, at play in the public space. To a large extent, I think what the president has done is to structure and align the cabinet along his core vision. And if you look at the basic, or rather the ministries that were, uh, that were addressed in this uh, reshuffle, you will see a near, uh, a, a near familiarity if you relate it with his uh, uh, renewed work agenda. Uh, the core, uh, the core administrative structure, you know, that would realize or crystallize the intentions and the programs of those uh, uh, of the uh, renewed hope uh, agenda. You, you will see a connection. For instance, uh, we see the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs having a substantive, substantive uh, minister now after a, a, lay, a, lay, a layback period. Uh, you see the reinforcement of the finance ministry, you know. You see reinforcement of the trade, investment, and industry uh, ministry. Mm -hmm. You see reinforcement of the housing ministry. Uh, you see a new ministry, the Ministry of the Regional Development, you know, that talks principally to the fact that indeed the federal government has intention of direct intervention in in, uh, in regions of, uh, of the country, in the six regions of the country, to, uh, to the regional uh, commissions. So, for me, I think what the president is trying to do is to quickly update and strengthen the vision that will connect to the crystallization of uh, the Renewed Hope Agenda. Okay, aside these objectives that you've clearly spelled out as uh, some possible reasons for this reshufflement, we also know that uh, the president coming into office has established uh, a performance monitoring unit. Could also information from that assessment from that, could, have, could that have also impacted this decision? And, and going forward, what should such units be doing more to ensure that Nigerians get to feel the impact that is needed for that development that Nigeria um, kind of is waiting for? Yes, um, uh, the, the president didn't make it... Uh, uh, as well, it is actually a public, uh, pu public uh, form of engagement that the president, president had with his minister announcing, uh, I think about two or three months into his government, that uh, uh, the ministers will be monitored and evaluated, and at the right time, uh, they will be given their report cards, you know. Uh, what we are seeing is actually the, uh, the outcome of uh, that uh, of that unit in the, in the presidency. Uh, the unit has been at work, essentially, and um, we are seeing, though some of us may disagree, some of us would agree with uh, some, I mean, some of the decisions taken about those who are to leave uh, have, uh, have uh, monitored the space, the media space, and of course the social media space, and have seen a lot of uh, diverse and divergent opinion on uh, uh, some ministers uh, out of the five that were relieved, uh, the number that shouldn't have gone, uh, a 
uh, number that uh, that should have gone, and that uh, in fact, uh, even in the cabinet as those uh, sustained, uh, there should be a number of them that should have gone. But I think uh, the unit and the president and the president himself would have been availed of uh, critical and strategic information more than uh, the, that they may be or there may be in the public space. So I. I think we need to give the president and that unit the benefit of the doubt because of the information, the kind of information uh, that they would have. But what is essential is that uh, they, the, there is fluidity in the administration by the fact that there is a constant evaluation you know, of uh, performance. And to a large extent, we can see the outcome of that, uh, to that, ev that evaluation. Uh, what, we, what we feel or what we see as uh, outsiders to the administration, to the cabinet, uh, may, be, uh, may be contraposition to what has been done. But to a large extent, I believe that uh, the fact that the president is attending to certain ministries and focusing on them by, of course, uh, engaging new characters, new personnel into that space, removing them and, of course, reshuffling, because it's not just about removal, it's also about reshuffling, which, is, which is to say that so ministers have been uh, evaluated and considered to be better for some uh, for other ministries, and, they, and that's why they are reshuffled. The important thing at the end of the day is to have a service-oriented, service-delivered, you know, process to the Nigerian people. Okay, let's look at uh, the, the new ministry, talking about regional development. Yes, there has been the conversation about uh, the, the states, that the subnationals, the local governments, uh, given so much support for them to grow those uh, governance. It lets people feel governance at that particular level. How does this impact uh, to the regional development communications? Yes, we've had some that have been in existence recently. We had new ones coming on board. How would this impact on governance? the regions? Well, I, I think the philosophy underpinning this position is to say, let us take governance and government you know, as, a, as an institution nearer to the people. Um, the federal government is seen as both distant and near. Distance in terms of a geography, in terms of distance, wherever you are in the Nigerian space, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the perception is that government, the federal government is in Abuja. And that cannot be less than 600 kilometers from wherever you are in the, in this, in the Nigerian space. So to a large extent, you have that, you have that physical distance. But again, there is also that consciousness of the responsibility of the federal government to the Nigerian people wherever they are. So much that even if somebody's water is not running in the house, he or she holds the federal government responsible for what are not running. If he steps out of his door and he steps into the, uh, onto the street and the roads are bad, he holds the, the federal government responsible, and so on and so on. And you get, uh, even schools, primary schools, that are not ordinarily supposed to be under the purview of uh, the uh, local government. Most Nigerians, you know, because of uh, you know, lack of understanding of that relationship, Hold the federal government responsible. So now that the federal government has decided to take, you know, its administration and its presence into that space, right, to the regional development uh, ministry, I think to a large extent, so the people will start feeling, you know, the intervention because it's principally an interventionist uh, institution as it were now. So you, the people wherever they are, the Nigerian people can start relating and referencing particular projects, you know. And uh, all that forms of service delivered directly to the to the federal government. So it is closing the geographical gap and the perce and perception change of the federal government to uh, with the Nigerian people wherever they are to a large extent. I think it is good. And if we are able to properly, if the states especially are able to properly uh, motivate and activate the functionality of the local government, so that the people feel governance at the local government, the world level, you, you see more trust, you know, growing, developing between the Nigerian people and the federal government. In fact, at an all tired of government, because what is important to the Nigerian people is to be able to evidence, you know, what government is doing at whatever level. So, and that will be the basis for the growth and development of trust, 
you know, and that will feel to a large extent uh, the, the trust deficit that, that uh, characterizes the relationship between the Nigerian people and the, and the government at all levels. Thank you very much, uh, Nia Kisiju, for your deep insights. While Nigerians look forward to a better performance this time. Thank you for your time.